Just to give a bit of a disclaimer before I begin, I was provided a free code by the developers and they told me to be honest and straightforward which is pretty much me and what I'm gonna do here. So what exactly is Space Wars Interstellar Empires? Well, it's pretty much a free to play turn based MMORPG. Back in the day I was really against these type of free to play games, I saw them not much more than lazy cash grabs, but games like Fire Emblem Heroes have slowly changed my mind, uh, plus the concept of multiplayer turn based battles in space has potential to be amazing. However, that potential can only be reached if the game is done correctly. So has Desert Hour Studios have a great early access gem on their hands? Or is it just another title that serves to fall short and rot away like a dying carcass? Hopefully it's the former and not the latter, but most likely it'll fall somewhere in between. So the first thing you do is you pick a faction and you create a captain from a few pre-made portraits. Uh, this will serve as your avatar. So I selected the Janari because uh, I like to play as alien races. And currently there's only two factions but two more will be added later on. So after you get settled and you pick your starting ship it's recommended that you start the combat tutorial. And honestly, the developers have done a great job in explaining many of the mechanics and all the facets in battle and the basic strategies that you can use. But I have to admit, the voice actor for the Janari, <laughs> he's trying way too hard. Hover the mouse or left click on the ship for more information. Battles are split into two phases, the allocation phase and the battle phase. You spend movement points in the allocation phase to charge up your weapons, your scanners, shields if you have them, and marine pods if you have them. Once everyone is done charging, the real battle begins and it's time to execute. The person with the most leftover points from the previous phase goes first. That person will then select the weapons that they want to use, bear in the mind that they charged them in the previous phase, and attack their target. If any damage is sustained, you'll be able to repair your ship in the adjustment phase. Overall, the system works well enough, but quickly becomes repetitive after multiple battles. We'll get more on this later. So once I did do the combat tutorial, I was just thrown in the world instantly. Poop, I already see this huge map. Um, I wasn't really entirely sure what to do next, but I saw that there was a battle on the outskirts of the territory, and I decided to join in. Unfortunately, this is when I started to see many of the issues that currently plague this game. The first issue I noticed is just how long the turn times are. Uh, each player has about 50 seconds during combat phase to make a move, but honestly, that's just way too much time, and most don't act until the final 15 seconds. A lot of them are just AFK for an eternity as well. The second issue is just how samey everything feels. I mean, there's hundreds of ships, and they all function the same. There's very little variation between them, um, plus there's no real way of personalizing your ship to be your own whether it'll be you know upgrading the blasters or the missiles or changing the aesthetics to like a different color or a, a custom paint job or just something maybe like an emblem or a decal just something to personalize and make it feel unique to you so the third issue is one that you see in many free-to-play games and that's the grind so in this game you earn XP and money which in this case is called honor points so you need a thousand XP to level up and you get XP and honor points from the amount of damage you inflict on enemies and also for each kill uh, you sometimes will get XP from your fellow faction getting kills in battles but it's just very low the only really good way to get this is from PvP battles because if you try PvE battles man and don't even bother with that the amount of XP and credits you get is abysmally low like one experience point for killing the enemy it's terrible you'll easily notice how little you're gaining because once you go to the shipyard and see how much a ship is one rank above you will cost <laughs> you'll know it's gonna take some time. The fourth and most glaring flaw is the lack of any battle music or music in general. Think of any great game that you've played that features turn-based combat. I mean, all of them have amazing music. I mean, just listen to these titles. I mean, you have Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, uh, the Persona series, Sweet Coden, Romancing Saga, Fire Emblem, Disgaea. All of them have amazing music, even more obscure ones like Makai Kingdom. And Dynasty Tactics have really great music. Instead, you just get this. Now, the fifth and most critical flaw that is really going to hurt players in the short run and in the long run is the matchmaking. It's just hard to find ships with your level, as the field can be filled with three rank 6 ships on one side and then two rank 3s on another. I mean, I get it's the style, it's supposed to be a dynamic battlefield, you know, anyone can enter at the same time, but 
I mean, they just got to do a better way of balancing it. So when people like me come in at rank three, it, they, it's easy for them to find people that are their rank or just maybe one rank higher if they're willing to take the gamble. So as you play more and more, you're going to ask yourself the question, is this it? Unfortunately, at the moment, yes. You can get into combat, get into combat, get into combat, but unfortunately there's just not much else, nothing really to talk about. And this brings up an issue I've been having with a lot of modern space games. You know, space games are much more than just combat. Even if that's the main focus, there can still be elements of exploration, discovery, trading, uh, pretty much anything else that you find in many of the great space games of years past and even ones that are st on early access right now. And honestly, there's no real goals outside of leveling up, getting your better ships, and helping your faction. There's nothing else to really help you keep going. So so apparently there is going to be a companion book to go along with the game uh, explaining the lore and the four factions. Um, however, I always look at it that if you need an outside source to help establish the world and why they're fighting, you know, what's going on, then you've pretty much failed at world building. A game should be enough to do this, to build the world for you. A book should just be more, you know, supplementary rather than something that's a must have. So before I wrap this review up, I would like to address the microtransactions. Fortunately, they're done in a way where it's only for cosmetic purposes, as well as respecting your skills. Um, so there's honestly no way to really get ahead if you spend more money in the game. You won't get like better ships or level up fast or anything like that. You'll just look better and have your skills switched around. So overall, this game has a long way to go. It just needs a whole lot more content wise. It feels very early alpha at the moment. I mean, one thing that I hope that they do in the future is to expand upon their PvE. You know, give me like a campaign. Give us a campaign that we can go into in each faction with their own campaign. So if you want to take a break from it, you can just go level up and get better with a PvE campaign or just some random PvE missions that are actually rewarding. Or maybe just missions to help diversify the gameplay. So instead of just the regular combat with another ship, you might have to escort a ship. You might might have to retrieve a certain item and bring it back to a certain location you know different things to mix it up that you can get away with in PvE and maybe not so much in PvP now while the game is pretty stable and I haven't had any frame rate issues or graphical hiccups even though the graphics look below average the gameplay is just not enough to keep me going in the long term at this point I can't really say to support it unfortunately I just, there needs to be more added to the game and once we get later into the development cycle then it'll probably be easier for me to recommend it or not. At this point I'll still look forward to it but I'm not going to be playing it for a while. Thank you guys for watching as always and this is Powerhouse signing off.